In this video, I'll explain the CAD approach for design problems. First, I'll start with analysis of cross section. Analysis of cross section means we have to determine the area, centroid, moment of inertia, etc. In structural and machine design problems, determination of area, centroid, and moment of inertia are frequently needed. Hence, a general problem is needed to calculate the area, centroid, and moment of inertia. These are the frequently used cross sections I section, T section, channel section, etc. 2D cross section shape is to be defined by coordinates of number of bits. As these coordinates are indicated as x1, y1, x2, y2, so on. The boundaries are formed by series of linear edges connecting the vertices. Curved boundaries has to be approximated by series of linear edges. The vertices are numbered in increasing order around the boundary in the clockwise direction. For negative areas, vertices are numbered in the counterclockwise direction. This is the generalized equation to find the area, finding the area of the rectangle. Assume the length of the rectangle as 60, height as 40, then you will get the coordinates as shown here. Substitute the coordinates in this equation then automatically you can find the area we are getting the area something like this 2400 so 16 to 40 equal 2400 that means the generalized equation what we have considered for calculation of area is verified then centroid of the area the point about which Total area of the plane is assumed to be concentrated is called the centroid of the area. X coordinate you can calculate using this equation A1 X1 plus A2 X2 plus A3 X3 by A1 plus A2 plus A3. For calculating the centroid of the Y coordinate, YC equal to A1 Y1 plus A2 Y2 plus A3 Y3 by A1 plus A2 plus A3. Now take the I section as shown here with the given dimensions and find the centroid. The coordinates of the I section will be something like this. This portion is the first portion of the total cross section. So that is first area A1. Then this is the second area A2. This is the third area A3. Now use the equations as shown here and find the centroid. Individual centroids for the areas A1, A2, A3 are shown here. Now you can get the Voroil centroid as shown here. In CAD approach for design problems, the first step is the standard design procedure. Second step is drawing flowchart. So to draw the flowchart, these are the various symbols we have to use. Start symbol is nothing but an elliptical oval shape. Parallelogram represents the input statements, rectangle for calculations, and conditional statement and output statements are as shown there. Then the third step is writing the algorithm. So for standard format for writing the algorithm is first step you have to declare the variables. After that you have to represent the input statements as shown here. After that, the output statement. So this is the standard format for writing the algorithm. Now I'll explain how to solve a gears problem using the CAD approach. The problem is something like this. Discuss the CAD approach to find the power transmitting capacity of the spark gear using following data. Branch spark pinion rotating at 600 rpm drives a cast iron spark gear at the transmission ratio of 4 is to 1. Allowable static stress for branch pinion and cast iron gear are 84 and 105 Newton per mm square respectively. The pinion has 16 standard 20, 20 degree full depth involute teeth and module is 8 mm. Face width of both the gears is 90 mm only. So after reading this problem extract the given data. So given data is something like this, face width is given, module is given, speed is given, velocity ratio is given, 
allowable static stress 84 per pinion per gear it is 105 per mm square number of teeth on the pinion jet p equal to 16 jet p is given velocity ratio is given from that you can get jet g value once module and number of teeth are known you can find the piss circle diameters that is dp and dg you can get then using the speed n and piss circle diameter dp you can find the velocity it is less than 10 meters per second then cv equal to 3 by 3 plus v and for yp the equation is 0 0.154 minus 0 0.912 by jet p yp value also we are getting as 0 0.1 yg 0 0.14 you have to check the product of sigma op into yp and sigma og into yg which one is less you have to observe and based on that you have to continue the design for pinion sigma op into yp value is less so you have to continue the design based on the pinion sigma p equal to sigma op into cv then find the tangential component tangential component of gate is for pt is nothing but beam strength in this case pt equal to m b sigma p pi into yp after getting pt you can get mt pt into db by 2 that is nothing but mt once mt value is known we can get the power power equal to 2 pi n mt by 16 to 10 power 6 that is 31.67 kilowatts this is the design procedure standard design procedure now represent this in the form of flow chart as shown here so here we are checking the condition if sigma op into y yp is less than then you have to go towards that a otherwise you have to go towards b what is those a b's that you can velocity is less than 10 meters per second we have one condition otherwise we have another condition something in that way these conditions also you can check then you can get pt then mt and after that power this is the flow chart then you, have, you can stop. Next step is writing algorithm. Declare the variables. Write the input statements. So while writing the program, if you are not able to declare all the variables at the beginning, you can start writing the program. And in the middle of the program, if you use any new variable that you can declare in the variables list. Take the input statements. After that, do the calculation then output statement so in this way you can explain the CAD approach for design problems in three steps first step is standard design procedure second step is drawing flowchart third step is algorithm